What's going on, everyone? We got a twofer for the people today. We're going to look at an interesting trade destination, trade rumors surrounding Baker Mayfield, possibly pairing up with his old GM in Detroit. And then we're going to spend the second half of the show looking at some free agency grades I gave out, including all the trades, the signings and whatnot. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But I want to start the show really by asking this question. Pick a side. It's the number one thing on the internet. I'd be stupid to leave it out. So who are you riding with? Will Smith or Chris Rock or Secret Door Number 3, which is my choice. I don't watch the Oscars. Who gives a shit? But if you do, Will Smith, give me WS or Chris Rock, give me a CR after that. Uh, probably the most exciting moment in Oscars history last night. First, John Dorsey. Familiar name in Cleveland, of course, the Browns GM for a handful of seasons, spotted in Cleveland on March 26th, saw this on Twitter over the weekend, didn't want to miss it, didn't want you guys to be left out on maybe the Detroit Lions being interested in Baker Mayfield. I'm not saying that if a GM comes to the state of Ohio, let alone Cleveland, that means they want to trade for Baker Mayfield. Also, Dorsey's not even the GM in Detroit anymore, but at this point, we got to start, you know, scraping for the bottom of the barrel of places Baker could end up because it has not gone to plan in terms of Baker Mayfield being traded from the Cleveland Browns. Let's check out some of the notes on Detroit, though. So, of course, John Dorsey works now in Detroit's front office as the senior um, pr uh, player personnel, something like that. I don't know. Jared Goff, though, he's an expensive, bad quarterback. Expensive average quarterback. $31 million cap hit this season, and a $41 million dead cap hit. What does that mean? If the Lions, let's say, traded for Baker and then cut Jared Goff, well, now they got to pay Baker's $18 million, unless the Browns take some of that salary cap for them. But if they just flat out cut Jared Goff, $41 million dead cap. That's a lot of money to just give up for Baker Mayfield, right? Maybe you'd make that move if Baker Mayfield was... A lot better than he is, but he's not, and so I don't see it happening. I doubt Dorsey's going to go through all of this to bring back Baker, a QB he picked ahead of Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen, a decision that ultimately kind of spelled doom for him in Cleveland. Not really. It wasn't like Allen broke out so early that it was obvious that it was a mistake, and Mayfield had a fine rookie season, right? Most touchdown passes by a rookie QB in NFL history. Financially, though, it makes little sense for Detroit to try and pull this off. I'm not going to say it's not going to happen because I also didn't think Tyreek Hill was going to get traded or Deshaun Watson would change his mind after saying the Browns were out and then go back to Cleveland after all. But if the Browns were to cut Baker, maybe then, maybe if Baker will take a bit of a pay cut from what he wants to make, I just don't see the X's and O's and the dollar figures adding up to get Baker Mayfield to the Motor City. Now, what do you think Baker's going to get traded for? I want to go down the path of he will be traded. Kevin Stefanski is in Palm Beach with Andrew Barry and the owners meeting and whatnot. A bunch of the big NFL execs down there. I think Andrew Barry's there. Maybe I put my foot in my mouth. But Stefanski was asked about whether or not he uh, could you know, see a trade happening. And here's what he said. I think everyone understands the situation and we're hoping that it is resolved soon. He went on to say, it's a unique situation. One, uh, we've got to see how it plays out. I think all of us would love an answer yesterday, but that's not the reality of it. It is a unique situation because you put, the, uh, you put your, yourself in front of, you know, the trade happening before you could pull it off. And what I mean by that is you let it be known you were trading Baker Mayfield and all of a sudden the value plummeted, kind of like the Amari Cooper situation. The Cowboys let it know that they were going to have to release Amari and that allowed the Browns get him for very cheap. If I make, if, when a Mayfield Baker, a Baker Mayfield trade happens, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Help us reach 7,000 subscribers. But if that's not a good enough reason for you to subscribe, when the Baker trade goes down, we're going to be getting a video out to you guys as soon as possible so you can get the trade details, know what the Browns are getting in return. We break down every single piece of Cleveland Browns news and rumors on this channel, so make sure you are subscribed today. Let's move on to the second half of the show now. Browns free agency greats. I'm going to go through the five moves Cleveland has made so far via trades, via signing an NFL free agency, and give you my teacher letter grade on them. First one up, Deshaun Watson. I give it an A+. You went out and you got top five quarterback in the NFL. You want to debate me on if he's top six, top seven? 
that's fine. That's what sports fans do, and that's what we love about it. But Deshaun Watson is a clear and obvious upgrade from Baker Mayfield. He makes the Browns legit, legit contenders, not in the AFC, but to win the Super Bowl. We skip past that. Now, Barry took a huge gamble on going for Deshaun Watson. It's a player who's got 22 civil lawsuits pending against him. He knows that it comes with more than just baggage, but it comes with a fan base, and understandably so, not wanting to trade a player, uh, trade for a player like that. But ultimately, I think Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski sat down and said, we don't want to lose our jobs. And if Baker Mayfield has a bad 2022 season like he did in 2021, pretty quickly that... AP Coach of the Year for Stefanski is very far in the rearview mirror. Back-to-back -back bad seasons, underperforming seasons, a lot of time, you know, players, coach, uh, coaches and GMs get fired for that. And I think that's why they ultimately pulled the trigger on this move. What do you think about the trade, though? I think this will be a question that's going to be asked, you know, in Cleveland sports media circles for a very long time. But if you haven't answered already or if you want to answer it again, let me know. Do you like the Watson trade? Y for yes or N for no? A trade that I think everyone should love, Amari Cooper, another A-plus grade for me, mostly because of what you got him for. This is a former fourth overall pick that's a very good wide receiver. I mean, there's no sugarcoating or trying to justify it. For the Browns to get Amari Cooper and basically for a fifth rounder and move back, what was it, 10 spots in the sixth round, 10, 11 spots? That's a very good trade for a wide receiver like Amari Cooper, who last year maybe didn't have the greatest season he's had, but he's also in a crowded wide receiver room in Dallas, and Dak kind of sucked the second half of the season. But before that, three straight seasons of 1,000-plus yards, five touchdowns, eight touchdowns. I mean, look, at just add him up right there. He's got nearly 30 touchdowns, if I do my math correctly, in the last four seasons. Amari Cooper is a stud, and the Browns got him for a fifth. Think about that. Before we move on to the rest of my free agency grades, the NFL draft is coming up. And you know when the player gets drafted, Browns unfortunately won't have this in the first round. But they put the hat on. And if you want to wear the hat that they're going to be wearing, you can get it at chatsports.com slash Browns hat. All the NFL 2022 official draft hats are there. You can get a flat brim. You can get um, uh, whatever it's called that uh, 47 puts out. Snapback and then fitted. That's what I was looking for. Fitted. Thank you, producer Marsh. Get it all at chatsports.com slash Browns hat. Link is in the comments and the description, too, of the show. Next grade was one of the early free agency signings, if you remember. Taven Bryant. I'll give it a B. Not a big smashing home run uh, signing right here. It's a guy that hasn't lived up maybe to the expectations he had in Jacksonville. But ultimately, I remember that Cleveland last offseason picked up two Malik's. And Malik McDowell, Malik McJackson, they held their own. They, they got it done, right? They, they didn't have to. They weren't the biggest signings. But ultimately, the Browns' run defense wasn't half shabby. It, it was top half of the league. And give credit to Joe Woods. But I like the Tavon, I like the Tavon Bryan signing. And you look what he did in Jacksonville last season in 2021. Four tackles for loss, two sacks. I mean, Here's a guy that was drafted in the first round in 2018, and you signed him for a decent contract. One year, $4 million. I don't mind it at all. Next one right here, we'll go twofer. Actually, yeah, ja uh, Jakeem Grant comes over from Chicago. I give it a B plus. I wouldn't say he's not Josh Cribbs, but a little bit of Travis Benjamin vibes I get from Jakeem Grant on that special team side of things especially. Grant signed a three-year contract worth up to $10 million with only $3 million guaranteed. So what that means is they're going to give him that three-year million guaranteed, almost all of it in the first year. If it doesn't work out, they cut him, and they don't have to pay him much after that. He's great at special teams, though. That's where I kind of uh, get that Benjamin vibes from him. But he's also a very fun gadget player. I mean, I, I would say he's like a step up from Demetric Felton. We saw Felton get used more and more as the season went on in exotic run, uh, you know, packages in the backfield and great special team speed. That's what Jakeem Grant can do. He's going to help out in kick and punt returns where DPJ and Felton, as the year went on, you just didn't get much of a spark from that side of the football. Final free agency grade, Chase Winovich. If he has C's too hard after the Browns traded for him from New England. But remember, C is average. And I think that's what it was. Mac Wilson for Chase Winovich. Kind of average. It's a pretty much, uh, I wouldn't say even swap, because 
Winovich's ceiling is so much higher, but Mac Wilson's more of your off-ball linebacker that maybe fits what uh, Belichick is trying to do in New England. But Winovich, who had his third season not go to plan, you look at his first two years in the NFL, guy combined for 11 sacks. That's pretty good value right there for just getting him for Mac Wilson, who was a borderline starter for the Cleveland Browns, was kind of seeing himself on the way out. So first two seasons in New England, Winovich was awesome. Last season, not so much. But if you can try and recapture those first two years out of him, you got a great linebacker that you got for pretty cheap. Those are five free agency moves that Andrew Barry and the Cleveland Browns have made so far. So what would you grade them? A, B, C, D, or F, all those moves combined. How would you grade Barry, what he's done so far in free agency? Let me know in the comment section below. In terms of the dollar figures here for what these guys are going to cost the Browns in 2022, on the right is their cap hit. Pretty low numbers. right? We know Watson's deal kind of got backloaded a little bit. It's all guaranteed. But they put money in signing bonus and other stuff to bring the cap hit down, however the cap works, because it's not real, but it is real. Amari Cooper, not a bad cap hit. $5 million, pretty much. Dave and Bryan, 3.9. Grant, just under 2. And Chase Winovich, just south of a million. Pretty low cap hits right there for the Cleveland Browns. Still giving some flexibility to try and maybe bring another free agent in and pay all of their draft signings. One last time, Dog Pound, if you have not subscribed already, please go ahead and do so. That way, when breaking news like Baker Mayfield getting traded happens or another free agency signing, whether it's Jarvis Landry or Will Fuller, we've got you covered here on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed, stay in the know, and we're going to catch up with you guys later here on the Cleveland Browns Report.